All right. So it's Lenny and Belisi talking about Greek accents, um, and and it's important to understand that Greek accent is a what's called a musical accent. It's different from English accents, uh, which are stress accent. What's the difference? Um, with a stress accent, you say a syllable louder. Um, uh, uh, this is what the usual explanation is. You say a syllable louder, and with a musical accent, you raise the pitch. But actually, when you stress a syllable, you raise the pitch a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when you, <laughs> uh, correspondingly, when in Gre ancient Greek, when you raise the pitch, you stressed it a little bit. So it's about it's about two things: one being foregrounded, and the other being backgrounded. Um, and um, we 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 don't have any needless to say recordings of what ancient Greek was like. So the important uh, uh, thing is we don't have a, any any um, any really reliable way of knowing, except on a comparative basis, what works in other languages, what the interval of pitch that we're mm -hmm. talking about is. Um, but but we can kind of guess roughly how that works. Okay. Um, but this is a, this is a game changer in the way in the way uh, accents work, and and here's what what here's another important thing about this. Just to begin, before we start talking about the 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 details, is that um, for uh, Greeks didn't have accents. If you look at ancient Greek as it was written in um, in Athens, say in the fifth century, when people started actually using writing. If you look at Athenian decrees, which they they carved into stone, okay, um, it's all in capital letters, beautiful capital letters. There's no space between the words, okay, and there are no accent marks, okay. <laughs> so so they knew what they were doing. They knew where the accents were on the words, okay. Why should they write them, okay? And why do they need put spaces between words? That just made, took up space on the stone, okay. So. A lot of things are different when it's your own language, and that's what happened. Is that oh, after the death of Alexander the Great, you remember him? <laughs> he conquered all of Europe and Asia and all that stuff. Okay, not really, but uh, but lots of it. And and what happened is that all kinds of places that where where people didn't know Greek, they 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 started learning Greek. Right. So when when ancient Greeks taught other people Greeks, they invented a system of accents. Okay, so it, it's uh, it, it, that's why we have them at all, and and it, and there are there are complexities to this kind of a situation, um, but anyway, let's talk about the three accents that we have, and I think these are names that are familiar to you. The first accent is an acute accent, and it looks just like any acute accent in a modern language. You want to draw an acute accent, just like that. Goes up, okay. Mm -hmm. I like the way Belisi drew it, <laughs> okay. Um, because what it actually designates is that the pitch rises on that syllable that has an acute accent over it. We're not going to talk about what syllables are. We're just going to finesse the problem of syllables. But mm -hmm. let's talk about accents and, and syllables. So, so when you have an acute accent on a syllable, the pitch rose on that syllable. Right. Um, the 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 other thing about that is that. It could, an acute accent can go on any of the three last syllables of a word. Okay, so so we should write that down. Any of the last three syllables. Uh, um, we'll talk about this kind of a rule. Okay, in a moment. Three syllables of a word. Okay, I mean not all, not all words even have three syllables. Okay, but but um, if there are three, it can go on any of the last three. Isn't it interesting? You wrote over the frame of. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's cool. Anyhow, um, it can go on Just any. So you know, this pen is very fat and difficult for. <laughs> yeah, you're doing beautiful. Minute work. <laughs> but uh, so it can go on any of the last three, um, and it can go on any of the those three. Whether that, it doesn't matter whether any of the syllables that it's on is either a long or a short syllable. Let's talk about that. Um, whether whether the syllable so let's add on whether the syllable is long or short. Okay, so in other words, the pitch can rise on a on a on a syllable if it's long or short. Um, what makes a syllable long or short is it's long if it contains a long vowel. 
Okay. And, and it's short if it contains a short vowel. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, there, there's more to this picture, okay? Um, but, but I think for our purposes that will do. We can say a long vowel or a diphthong, okay? Um, why, why, are, why are we saying, call these things long? Well, it takes longer to pronounce a long vowel, okay? Mm -hmm. That's why. Um, a uh is a short vowel. A uh is a long one, right? Mm -hmm. so, so there really is, it's a matter of, of amount of time. In the description of Greek, we have this really fun concept. It's the Latin word mora, M-O-R-A, which means, which is just the Latin word for delay, okay? In other words, interval, if you want. Um, and what we, the rule in, in, that we have from antiquity about Greek is that it, it, a long syllable is two mori and a short syllable one mora. Okay, mm -hmm. we should write that down. It takes one mora to, to, to say a long syllable and two to say a, to say a short syllable and two to say two mori. It's got an A-E ending from Latin. To, to say a long syllable, okay? That's, this is a fancy way of, of saying that a short syllable is half as long as a long one, or a long syllable is twice as long as a short one, but it, it doesn't tell you how long they are, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, that makes sense because different people speak at different rates, right? There's no fixed rule about how long a syllable is going to be. But anyway, um, so... So what we're saying is that an acute accent can stand on either a long or short syllable, and it stands on any of the last three syllables of the word. This concept is, in Greek, it's only the last three syllables of a word that are important for purposes of accentuation of the, of the accentuation system that we've inherited, okay? Right. Um, and, and, and it's not really true, true, okay, because it's clear that other syllables could be accented but they just didn't mark them, okay? Mm -hmm. The people who invented the system were half-hearted about it, <laughs> <laughs> okay? They were not as obsessive as a modern linguist would be, okay? So, so uh, we're just going to stick with what the, what's indicated, and we'll, we'll figure out how it works. All right, so that's the first type of accent. Um, the second type of accent is a grave accent, okay? And it's just... Uh, looks the opposite of the acute. It goes down, okay? Um, and, um, and the grave accent is much more restricted in Greek, um, at least in the conventional use of the accent system. You're, you're falling out of the picture, but listen. You can, you know, the, the, the grave accent um, can go on only on the last syllable of a word, okay? And, and, and it doesn't matter whether it's long or short, and it can go on a long or a short syllable, so like an acute. Okay. In fact, what we can have to tell you is that you only have a grave accent when, when a, um, a word ends with an acute accent, and there's another word after it. Another word follows. Okay. Then what happens is that the grave accent, the acute accent, becomes a grave accent. Effectively, it's somewhat deceptive. Okay, acute becomes grave. What what you're really doing is saying, if the, we have a, we can't have a rising pitch at the very end of a word if there's another word after it. We'll come back to this and we'll try and explain it. But if, why would why would it be okay? If you think about about it, we'll we'll try and, and show you that that's this makes sense. Okay, the the alternative just to make the rule clear, but when it's followed by another word, what else could be it be followed by? Other than another word, a punctuation mark. Or... Right. Okay. So <laughs> the punctuation marks in Greek. Okay. If there's a punctuation mark, in other words, after a word that ends with an acute, it stays acute. Okay. If there isn't, it becomes a grave. Um, and the punctuation marks in Greek are, and you should write these down, okay, um, they're period, that's a Greek word, periodos, it means, it means a journey, <laughs> a travel around a place, a road around a place, okay? <laughs> so what you're doing is marking the end of the journey, oh. uh, period. Beautiful concept, right? Mm -hmm. There's um, a question mark, okay, which looks to us like a semicolon, 
Okay. Um, so how do you make a semicolon in Greek? Okay, there's oh, a third, third, uh, there's a third thing, which is a raised dot. Okay, like that. And then there's a comma. Comma is the Greek word for um, a lock of hair. <laughs> okay, so it's like a little curly. Lock of hair. <laughs> All right. So so these uh, these are the punctuation marks in Greek. And if there, there's a word with an acute accent and a period, a question mark a semicolon or a comma after it, it stays in acute. Otherwise, it becomes a graph. And, 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 it, and it should, by, by all rights, it should mark a fall in pitch. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, there are some places where we can see that the, the, the graph accent really does have that function, but in the conventional accent system that everybody learns, it doesn't. It just marks when an acute has changed mm -hmm. to, well, to a being a non-accent. What happens is getting deleted. All right, so that's a grave accent, and now we're coming to come to the third, and the, maybe the most interesting of the three accents, and that's the circumflex accent, okay? And Belisi, you know, we want to write it not like that, okay? okay? Um, that's the way the book does it, yep. but okay. let's write it the way, yes, we can even make it pointier. Let's make it a pointier version so mm -hmm. we can see. These are three different ways of doing it, okay? Mm -hmm. The third that one that Belisi wrote is the is the real original one, mm -hmm. and what it is is a combination of an acute and a, and a grave right. accent. So what if the acute accent marks a rise in pitch, and the grave accent marks a fall in pitch, what the circumflex marks is a rise and fall in pitch on the same syllable. Okay? Now if you think about this, here's the one rule about circumflex accents, and maybe this makes sense to you. Uh, circumflex accents can only stand on long syllables. Mm -hmm. Because you need time to, for the pitch to rise and fall. This is a key element, okay, in the whole way this system works. So if you've got two mori, that is a long syllable, the pitch can rise on the first mora and go down on the second, right? Okay? Yeah. And so that's why you, you can only have a circumflex on long syllables. Here's another rule. Um, a circumflex accent can only be on one of the last two syllables of a word. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, Greek words in principle have only one accent on per word. Okay. Mm -hmm. As I said, there are actually one more, but we only represent one. Okay. So why should there be this restriction on, on circumflexes um, being only on the last two syllables of a word? And it has something to do with this problem of the rising and the falling of pitch. Okay, so he, here's the thing. You can put stress accents. You can anywhere in a word. You can, you know, stress all over the place, okay? Um, but when it comes to a musical accent, if you think about this, if you start, let's say you have a, a word like elephant, okay, mm -hmm. a three-syllable word, if you have a rise in pitch on the first syllable, and then you have a rise in pitch on the next syllable, then you have a rise in pitch on the next one. By the end of the sentence, you're always <laughs> going to be up here, right? right? Okay. The, the 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 important rule about a system of, of pitch accents, of musical accents, is that when the pitch rises on one syllable, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it has to fall on the next one, yeah. or which is what you have with an acute, okay? So in the, in, the, in the writing system for accents, you mark the rise in pitch, mm -hmm. but you don't actually mark the fact that it goes down, okay? Right. That's what some accent systems actually did that. But it has to come down on the next syllable. When you have a circumflex accent, it rises and falls on the same syllable, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, so so here's the one basic rule, and and and, and this is a system Okay, this rule explains the, really the whole way in which the, the Greek accent system works. Okay, it's a little bit hard to get to get your head around. I think, in, and it may take you a little while, but it, the important thing is that it's a rule that has to do with the gravity, if you want, of a, of pitch. That the pitch, if it goes up, it has to come down. Right. right? It's like throwing a ball up in the air; it has to come down uh, on our planet anyway. Okay, so. With the 
he, here's the one rule and, and that we that we have to digest and learn, and that we're gonna we're gonna stop today with this rule. It's called the continuation law. Okay, um, you might want to start a new yeah, a new that. page. So the the law or the rule of continuation. Okay, so what's a what's continuation? Here's another technical term that we're throwing at you. Um, we, when you start talking about accents, you really, it's in, in a way, it's a misleading way of presenting this system, which isn't really about accents, it's about continuation. Because the continuation is, is the process of the rise and fall of mm -hmm. the pitch, okay? The system really should represent both, okay? But it only represents the rise with an acute accent, and it represents the rise and fall with a circumflex, okay? So what we're talking about, what the rules in this system are about, are about that continuation, about the combination of the rise of the accent and its fall. In the case of an acute, it rises on one syllable and it falls on the next one, even though it's not marked. In the case of a circumflex, it rises and falls on the same syllable. So that process of the rising and the falling is continuation, okay? The syllable, the the, ax, the pitch rising and falling, in, uh, on a word either, and it happens either on one syllable or over two. Okay, so here's the rule about continuation. Um, okay. All right, you ready? Yep. Uh, there cannot be more than one mora between the continuation and the end of a word. Between the continuation, that is the rise and fall of pitch, and the end of a word. Okay, so if you think about what we said about circumflex accents, okay, and you think first think about this rule, there cannot be more than one mora. Um, well, that means that there can be less than one mora, right? You could have no mori between the continuation and the end of a word, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but we're, what we're saying is you can't have two. That's another way of saying it. You can't have two or more mori between the continuation and the end of a word. That, that's, that's just a reformulation. It cannot have two or more mori between the continuation and the end of a word. Okay, so mori means a, a, a syllable. It's, it's two mori in a long syllable and one mori in a short. Okay, um, so if you think about what we said about circumflexes, that circumflexes can only happen on the last two syllables of a word, well then you can see how the rule works, okay? If a circumflex is happening on the last syllable, how many more are there between it and the end of the word? None. None. <laughs> yeah, okay, if it happens on the second to last syllable, how many more are there? One. Okay, but or if there are two, two. Yeah. it can't be on that syllable, right? Mm -hmm. So we already learned a new rule that's a function of the law of continuation that you can only have a circumflex, okay, we haven't said this rule, but, but it follows from the rule of continuation. You can only have a circumflex on the second to last syllable if the last syllable is a, is a short one, okay? Mm -hmm. So there can't be a long vowel there because then there would be two more I, all right? So what we're gonna start out by doing is seeing how this rule of continuation applies. It doesn't tell you how to accent words, it tells you what were it so far anyway, it tells you when the accents are properly applied, okay? And uh, so that's what we're going to do in class. Done. Mm -hmm. Oops.